Okay, so when you first log into Signage Live, um, you agree to buy a screen very similar to this. Um, basically, what this screen will show you is the general network overview, so exactly what is going on with the network. So each of the six circles represents something different. So the first one represents any content which has been deployed and um, should be shown today, which isn't on the screen yet. Second one is any future content which hasn't been deployed. And the third one is players which have missed their health checks. And then the last three, if any players are out of service, if any maintenance is required, or if there's a follow-up required on the player. Um, bottom right, you can see recent connections, so which players are doing their health checks, which players are doing their content checks. Uh, content checks are basically uh, pings from the player to the server, just to check if there's any new content for it to download. Health checks work the other way, so health checks um, work from the server to the player, just to make sure that they've switched on, it's got an internet connection, signage live is open and running. Um, you can click on any segment of these circles, so if I say click on the 10 circles there, we can go in and we can view exactly which players have missed their health checks. And then if you want to go in further detail, you can click on either enter the serial name, the address of the site, anything like that, and you can go in and view more information about the player itself. Now in here we can choose how often the content checks are happening. So if we wanted to say choose them to be happening every one minute, five minutes, ten minutes, we can set all that up within here. Uh, right up to say every 24 hours within a day. The other option is to have it happen at a certain time in the day. So if you wanted to say have it happen at 10 to 6 every night, you can set it up daily that way. The reason people um, ask for that functionality is obviously if, if um, all your players are doing contact check, uh, content checks and downloading content, it's not going to be up everyone else's bandwidth throughout the day if it's sort of downloading. So you can choose to have it happen sort of after everyone else has gone home or before everyone gets in, in the morning. Next thing is health checks. So you can choose how often the health checks are happening. At the moment, this is set for every four hours. But again, if you want to choose it to happen every one minute, five minutes, ten minutes, right after, again, every 24 hours, you can set that up as well. Um, the health checks, like I said, they basically let you know that the player switched on, it's got an internet connection, signage live is open and running, it's playing, it's playing content on your screen pretty much. Uh, the automatic player reboot, um, we recommend to have this enabled. What, effectively what that will do is reboot your player, I think it's sometime between 2 o'clock and 5 o'clock in the morning, just to make sure um, sort of everything sort of kept fresh on the player itself, um, make sure the player is running smoothly and quicker, everything like that. And under connection statistics, we can also see sort of things like when the last content check was, when the last help check was, when it was last rebooted, everything like that as well. Now, if I go to the system tab, um, we can view things like the client version of Science Live, what's the version of Science Live it's running, uh, what operating system it's running, um, how much free space is left on the hard drive, as well as things like the processor memory and the resolution of the screen. Under the site, we can give the site uh, a description and address, as well as some reference codes and a contact name and telephone contact for the, for the person who's in charge of that screen. So if, if the player was ever switched off for whatever reason, you can just quickly give them a call, make sure they switch back on. As I sort of briefly mentioned already, we can also view the schedule um, and what should be playing at a certain time. So the first one was due to start on the 26th of June. Um, we just click on the names it here, and then it will bring up a list, uh, a view of what should be showing on the screen. Um, the second one here started on the 4th of July, and it's just a, it's just a logo, pretty much. Um, you can also see if there was an end date set here, or if there was any recurrence set here. So if it was only meant to be shown on Monday, whereas there's a Friday, we can see that under the recurrence on the right-hand side. Under tags, um, we have the ability to uh, add site tags for each of your players. Um, it's really useful when you're sort of deploying content, if you want to quickly search for all the players which are matched to the certain tag and just deploy to those ones. Uh, the other thing it's really useful for is conditional playback. Um, I'll be running through conditional playback with you in a minute, but if you get the site tag set up, that's, it will allow you to use conditional playback. The final thing here is screen control. So uh, using Windows Power Save mode or um, RS232 commands, you can have your player switch on and off at certain times in the day or certain days in the week if you want to. So for this particular one, it currently switches on at 9 o'clock, switches off at midday, turns on again at 6 o'clock in the evening, switches off at midnight. So another useful functionality, obviously that's a sort of slightly um, misaligned schedule. Usually that would be switching them on at 8 o'clock in the morning, switch them off at 7 o'clock at night or whatever like that. Okay, so that's sort of the general overview on the players themselves. Now I'll show you how we get through and upload content and deploy it. The first step is to go to Content, Assets, and then Add Assets.
I'll show you a list of all the supported media file types that we have within Science Live. So if you see here, JPEG, GIF, BMP, PNG, wide range of video files, audio files, Flash, HTML, including HTML5. Uh, and then if you've got the right hardware, you can have things like live TV on your screens, as well as things like RSS, uh, RSS feeds and executable files as well. So to add files and upload files, you just click on Add Files over here. You select the assets that you want to upload from your computer, click on Open and then they will be added to the list on the left hand side. Uh, if you want to add a, a URL like such as a web page or an RSS feed, you can click on add URL. Add web page if you want to add a web page and then either just type in the web page that you want to upload or copy and paste it. Confirm you have permission to use and distribute it, click OK and then that gets added to the bottom of the list. The other thing we can do is add an RSS feed, so if you want to say a scrolling news ticker on your screen, click on add RSS feed. I'm just going to do a quick Google search for a BBC RSS feed. So I'm going to go to the BBC website and then I'm just going to choose one of these ones. So I'm just going to choose UK. So I'm going to copy the link address there, paste it in, and make sure HTTP isn't in there twice. Give it a name, so I'm just going to call it BBC. Again, confirm have permission to use and distribute it. Click OK, and then that will get added to the bottom of the list. Now we can also tag our assets here as well if we want to. So we can tag all the assets or we can tag individual assets. Um, so it's really useful um, if you want to, if you have say a large network and, you're, and you want to um, tag your assets, make them a lot easier to find. So it's been useful to tag your assets if you're managing quite a large network. Once you're happy with everything in the list, just click on upload assets, confirm you have permission to use and distribute them, click OK again, and then those will begin to upload one by one. Now if I close this window down, um, it will take you straight into the create a playlist uh, window. We can also get here by our content playlist and then create playlist. Um, to create a playlist, it's very, very simple. Uh, literally all you need to do is just click and drag the assets that you want to show into the timeline at the bottom, like so. So as you can see, I've just dragged five assets down. We've got a duration of roughly 56 seconds now. Uh, with images, we can click on them and choose them to be played for longer than the default 10 seconds. Um, the other way to do this is to right click on them and then set the asset duration. So if I want that one to take 15 seconds, we can choose it like that. Now the other really useful feature here is um, conditional playback. I know I've mentioned it a couple of times already. Um, really useful, for, say, if you have advertising or a particular campaign that you only want to be shown on your screen between certain dates or on certain days in the week. So you enable it and then from here you can select, say, um, I only want this to be shown um, on in August, and then again, if you only want it to be shown between 12 o'clock and uh, 5 o'clock, you can do that as well. So it's completely up to you when you want a particular asset to be shown when it's deployed, and it will always follow these rules here. Now the other option that we have here is uh, playback conditions. So um, you can choose using sort of the tags that we set up earlier. You can have things showing on uh, only on particular players matching that tag, or don't play on players matching that tag. So the one I had earlier was uh, the boardroom, so I'm going to type in board there. And now it will only play on players matching the tag of board, or you can don't play on those players. So it's completely up to you what you tag the players as. You can do different ones for different assets within the playlist. Um, like I said, completely up to you. So I'm going to click save, and then I'm just going to hover over this asset, and then we can see the valid from to the valid to date, which days it recurs on, the start time, the end time, as well as any don't play on players matching tag of boardroom. Now if I go to control assets, we can see um, the various control assets that we have within Science Live. Um, we've got the localized playlist here, so if I click and drag this down, uh, what this is, um, if you have managing a large network or you want to give sort of some permissions to a, a local user who's in charge of that screen, we can do that, uh, but without giving them access to everything on the network. So you give it a name, so localized playlist. Create a playlist per player. Um, if you select that, yes to that, each player will have an individual one. The maximum number of assets that this person can add to the network uh, to the playlist, so I'm going to choose three. We choose the playback mode so we can play all of them or just play one of the three on each loop. The playback duration, play for length, and then the play order so you can have it normal, randomized, reversed. I'll choose random. We select the players that this is applicable to. So I'm going to say those two. Click OK, OK again. And then you can see the localized playlist has been added to the network. 
Now we can go in, we can create local users and set them up to be able to add a couple of assets into this playlist. The other thing we have here is the nested playlist, which will allow you to play two playlists um, together, one after the other. So you give it a name, you choose if you want to generate an empty playlist or use an existing one. I'll just use an existing one as an example. And again, we can choose it to play all the assets or just play the next one. Select the playback duration, the play order, click OK, and then that will add to the list as well. Once we're happy with everything in here, we click on Save Playlist, give it a name, click on Save, and then that's the playlist saved. The next step is to create the layout, which is basically the template for where all your content is going to be shown on the screen. So I'll just give this a chance to load. I'll use this particular one as an example here, and just delete everything. Off. Now under layout design, uh, within here we can choose uh, a background image. So this is a background image that we have created for us. Um, alternatively, you can just choose a background color. You choose the resolution of the screen that you're designing for, as well as the orientation, whether it's landscape or portrait. And if I go to content zones, the first one is the schedule content zone. In here we can put the playlist that we've just created. So you just click and drag it down, resize it to exactly where you want it to be on screen. Uh, if you see top left, we can just sort of have a, a slight play around with things like X and Y coordinates um, and the exact width and height for various bits and pieces as well. RSS feed, so I can click and drag down the RSS feed, resize it as I would the other, the other option, change the font color to white so everybody can view the font which is scrolling. Um, we can add a separator image in, so if we want to add, say, a logo separating the news stories, we can do that. And we can also choose, say, the speed that it scrolls, as well as the direction that the, uh, the animation scrolls in as well. So once we're happy with exactly how our, our playlists look, we have various other bits and pieces on here as well. So if you wanted to add some static text or add a web page, a clock, you can add all that stuff in. Literally all you do is just click and drag it down onto the timeline, like so. Resize it, put it where you want it to show. Once we're happy with how the template and the layout looks, go to the Home tab, click on Save, give it a name, and it will save. And then we're going to deploy the content. To do this, we go Content, Deployment. And again, it gives us two options. We can either deploy a default playlist, which is just going to be full screen video or images. The other option is to deploy a schedule or interrupt, um, which is just going to be shown sort of um, exactly between times and dates that you want it to be shown on. So it asks us how we want to show our content. As a schedule, as an interrupt, we'll click as a schedule. When do you want your schedule to start? You can either choose to start it now or choose to start it on a specific date. So if we wanted to start it, say, tomorrow. When do you want it to end? Run until further notice. If you click that, it will run until something else is deployed. Or you can choose a specific date for it to end. So if I select the end of the year. And we can also set a recurrence in here as well. So if we only wanted this one to be shown, shown between, on weekdays between, say, uh, five, 3 o'clock and midnight, uh, we can set that up. And effectively, by, by using this the recurrence feature, um, you can have different things shown on your screens at different times in the day or different days in the week. It's completely up to you when you want it to be shown. So we'll click OK again. It'll ask us what we wish to show, a playlist or a layout. I'll select Layout. We can choose the layout that we want to use um, on the on the network. So if I say sign live layout one, and now if you see the film strip here, you just double click on the film strip, select for the duration of the layout, and then you can select the playlist that you created already. So if I just use that one as an example, scheduling complete. Same with the RSS feed, just double click on the RSS feed, select the feed that you want to show. And then the RSS feed that you want to show, so I'll just use the BBC one as an example, and then second, there you go, the story is now scrolling across the screen. Once we're happy with how it looks, we click OK, and it'll bring up a list of all the players that we have available on the network. Now, as you see here, we've got a couple of, couple of ones in red, and we've got a couple of ones in yellow. Uh, the ones in red, oh, let me do that. The ones in red um, are Generally, I'm running a different version of Science Live, which doesn't support layouts, so it won't let you deploy this to them. 
if they're in yellow, it generally means that the resolutions don't match. So it will give you a warning at this stage. If you want to go back and change it, you can do. Um, and then to deploy it, literally all you do is just click on the little green tick and then click on deploy over here. You can see what you're currently deploying before you do it. So you can see you're deploying layout one, start date, end date, any recurrences which are set. Click deploy and then the next time the players do their content checks, they will update on the screen. Now a couple of other bits and pieces that we have within Signage Live. Um, on every page you will see help with this page. You can click on that and it will take you in and you can go to our knowledge base and it will basically have a guide on how you do anything within Signage Live. So scheduling a layout schedule, basically what I've just run through with you. Um, it, will ask, it will take you through the various questions that you have to do and it will talk you through exactly how you deploy the content to your screen. Uh, the other thing I haven't mentioned, or I've mentioned already, but it's really useful is the, uh, the live chat feature. You can just click it whenever you're having a problem with anything within Signage Live, and then you can you can still talk to a member of the support team. Like I said, that's available 8 a.m. till midnight UK time, which works out roughly sort of 3 a.m. to 8 p.m. Eastern time. So we've pretty much covered. If you ever have a question, you can speak to us.